Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. We are going to uh, wait for a minute to the others to come, and then we are going to begin with the session that we are going to um, develop this day. This is the second session of this week, so we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing uh, yesterday, and we are going to see some examples uh, of application of the topics that we are going to uh, develop because we are going to uh, talk about the topics that we were developing on the previous session, but also uh, we are going to talk about another topic that is um, important for the topic because we need to understand the uses of that information and also in which cases we are going to use every of the expressions that we have on the information. Um, I know that uh, someone told me that I need to like write the difference between this and there is, but I had a very complicated day because I have a um kind of tiring day because I had a lot of things to do and I didn't put the information uh, earlier, but I have the information and the document already. So in this case, um, I just want to say that I didn't have enough time to uh, put the information on the document uh, like before, but in this case, you have the information and I'm going to show you what is this information about? So um, in this case, you have two different images. One of these image is related to the information or the difference between these, that, these, and those. And the other one is the use of there is and there are. That is the topic that we are developing uh, in these days. Um, so we're going to see just to look uh the information that we have about the um the the, the image but we are going to continue with the other topic that uh, we were developing yesterday because we are going to complete that information today and you know that for this week in this case we are in the middle of this week uh, you know that we are going to come uh, to complete the section number three Para esta semana tenemos que completar lo que es la sección número 3. Um, si nos fijamos en la plataforma, en esta sección número 3, tenemos one, two, three different uh, knowledge checks. Solo tenemos tres knowledge checks. So, en este caso no es um, que vamos a hacer un montón de ejercicios. En este caso tenemos tres. Pero estas actividades... In el caso de la number one, that is 3.4, is related to a map. We are going to talk about uh, places of town, um, and we are going to listen a conversation related to that topic. And in that case, you are going to complete the uh, information that you have on the map. So you are going to see the different places on the map, and you are going to complete the questions and you are going to like choose what is the right place or what is the answer, the correct answer for the questions. On the knowledge check 3.9, you are going to write the proper quantifier. We are going to talk about the quantifiers in, um, I think in the next session, that is tomorrow, because we are going to continue talking about the use of there is and there are, and also we are going to talk about uh, the countable and non-countable nouns, because we are going to make the difference between 
the countable and uncountable nouns, we are going to see some um, words that we are going to use in that category. Um, and then we are going to talk about the quantifiers. What are the different words that we can use to um, to use in this case when we are talking about countable and uncountable nouns that will help, uh, will help you to understand better the use of this information. When you're talking about quantities, um, you're going to see some of these words and how to apply it in a, a real life conversation. But in this case, we're just going to like understand what is the use of the quantifiers and uh, uh, which uh, words are functioning as quantifiers in English. And then we have the uh, knowledge check 3.11, that is a reading exercise. In that case, you're going to read information that you're going to find on an article that is called the world in one neighborhood. And you are going to complete that part in which you are going to um, look for the specific places or the specific answers on the uh, article. But also, we are going to complete the midterm. In this case, we are going to complete that on Thursday. El día jueves vamos a completar el examen eh, medio, podemos llamarlo, ya que estamos en la mitad del curso. Así que el día jueves vamos a, tra a trabajar en lo que es el examen para que ustedes lo puedan hacer eh, a esa hora también, para que no haya eh, inconvenientes y no nos atrasemos con el trabajo, ya que el día jueves ustedes ya tienen que tener completo toda esa información. E igual vamos a analizar un poco, ¿verdad? Las partes que vienen en el examen. So, in that case, we're going to continue with the information that we have on the document. I'm going to show you the different images that I have for you related to the topic, or in this case, related to the difference between uh, the use of the, this that, this, and those, that in this case, we're not going to like um, talk about all the things that we can do or the phrases that we can write with this information because we are going to see this topic on the last session. Vamos a ver este tema en la última sesión porque es un tema que también tenemos que trabajar en esta, en esta sección, en esta semana. So, in este caso, solo vamos a ver esta imagen donde se muestra la diferencia. What's the difference? And we have the uh, uses of these words. In este caso, tenemos singulares y plurales. En el primero, que son los singulares, tenemos this and that. Y tenemos también dividido por near and far. Los que están cerca eh, y lo que está lejos. En este caso, lo dividimos de esta manera. Number one, the singular words in this case are this and that, and near, we are going to use this. And if the thing is far, we are going to use that. And it says, refers to one nearby thing or person. This is my office. And in the second one, it refers to one thing or person that is not nearby. En este caso, estamos hablando de la cercanía que tenemos con las cosas. Como ustedes lo pueden ver en los ejemplos, el uso del this se refiere a cuando las cosas están cerca de nosotros. Y obviamente es singular. This is my office. Esta es mi oficina. Yo estoy presentando ese espacio que está cerca de mí. Then we have that. that the example said, that is my office building. Ella está caminando quizás por la calle y ella señala, ah, ese es mi apartamento de oficinas o es mi compañía o es el lugar donde yo trabajo, pero está lejos de ese lugar. So in that case, it's far from eh, me in that case. Then we have the plurals. Tenemos los plurales. En este caso tenemos refers to nearby things or people. Se refiere a... Eh, cosas o personas que están cerca de mí, pero obviamente son más de una. Y tenemos el ejemplo. These chairs are available. Estas sillas están disponibles. Estamos hablando de objetos que están cerca de mí y que son varios. And the other one, those, 
and it refers to people or things that are not nearby. Those are my colleagues. En este caso, estamos hablando de cosas o personas que están lejos de donde estamos nosotros y que son obviamente plurales. Estamos hablando de muchas, ¿verdad? O de varias. En este caso, estas son las diferencias entre esas cuatro. And then we have another image, but you can see the, the image on the document later. That is this one. That is related to the use of there is and there are. That is the thing that we are doing right now. And you can see what is the meaning. In this case, the meaning is to say that something exists. El uso del there is y el there are es para decirnos que algo existe o no existe. En el uso del those, these, these, and that, es para decirnos la cercanía con las cosas. There is, there are, es para saber si algo existe o no. That, this, this, and those, es para uh, explicarnos la cercanía con los objetos y las personas. It's like the main difference between the different words that we are learning in this uh, course. Now, we're going to continue with the information that we have left about the topic of there is and there are. In this case, we were talking about the different uh, statements or like the rules that we can apply to the use of these structures in English. And in this case, we have this one that is the uh, rule number four that is related to negative statements es relacionado a las oraciones en negativo donde nosotros vamos a ver básicamente verdad cómo crear oraciones usando el there is and there are pero en una forma negativa so we were saying because this is the last part in which we were working we were saying that to construct negative sentence or to say that something doesn't exist you should add not after is or are. En este caso es lo mismo con las oraciones negativas. Vamos a utilizar palabras negativas que nos van a ayudar a determinar que nuestra oración, pues obviamente, está siendo negativa. Ahora, en el caso del there is y el there are, ahí mismo lo dice, después de esa parte, que es el there is, vamos a colocar el not, que en este caso es nuestra palabra negativa, que es la que nos va a ayudar a nosotros a determinar que nuestra oración, obviamente, está en forma negativa. Ahora, Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. There is, no there is not a tiger in the zoo. There is not a tiger in the zoo. No hay un tigre en el zoológico. There are not 10 books on the shelf. There are not 10 books on the shelf. Básicamente es agregarle el not a nuestras oraciones eh, con there is and there are. Now, in this case, it's not like we're going to focus a lot on the negative eh, statements. In this case, we're just going to write these examples. Now, we're going to see the eh, rule number five that in this case, we are going to use a expression. Vamos a utilizar una expresión en la regla número 5 para determinar que hay cero, que la cantidad que nosotros estamos expresando es cero. So, in this case, in the rule number 5, I'm going to move this right here. It says that you should use
there are not any with countable nouns and there is not any there is not any with uncountable nouns. To indicate that a zero quantity of something exists. Please, what is Tell the me. meaning of shell? Or shelf, no sé cómo lo pronuncio. Shelf. Ajá. Uh -huh. Es eh, el lugar donde nosotros colocamos. En este caso lo podemos eh, traducir como. Eh, son estas. Give me a second. I have the, the, the things in front of my, of my computer. And. Um, en este caso son las. Someone eh, has the word in Spanish for shelf in this moment because I have the the thing in front of my desk, but I like I cannot think about the name in Spanish. Um, give me a estante. Uh, sí, son unos estantes pero también lo podemos utilizar como estos uh, eh, pedazos pequeños de madera que se colocan en la pared para colocar... Repisas. Eh, exactamente, las repisas. Thank you. Son esas repisas, porque si ustedes se fijan, eh, cuando nosotros unimos la palabra bookshelf, que es como la, los estan las estanterías, ¿verdad? Donde ponemos o colocamos los libros... Eh, es como una palabra ya completa, pero en este caso, shelf, son estas estanterías eh, o estas repisas donde podemos colocar no solo libros, sino que también podemos colocar otro tipo de cosas. Pero básicamente, shelf es that thing, las repisas. O lo, como ya decían también, ¿verdad? Eh, puede ser de diferentes maneras. Eh, pero básicamente, esa es la esencia, ¿verdad? But in this case, it's like, ah, I don't know. Pero es que no me gusta comprar así porque no lo puedo partir. No lo puedo realizar. Ah, bueno, entonces no lo compro. Okay, so in this case, we're going to continue. Um, I was saying that in este caso, eh, vamos a utilizar dos frases que nos van a servir para eh, determinar o para explicar que no tenemos como uh, esta cantidad. So, in this case, it's related to nothing. You have a zero of this thing. For example, you are like selling something. And in this case, you end your product and at the end, you have nothing else. And in this case, you're going to use, there are not, that is the first one, there are not any, the complete thing. Van a utilizar la frase completa. Vamos a marcarlas para irlas separando. Les voy a poner en dos colores. So we have, there is any, I mean, there are not any, and there is not any. En el caso de there are not any, lo vamos a utilizar con countable nouns, nombres contables. But this one I'm going to mark like this. And there is not, I'm going to do it this, kind of bigger. There is not any, lo vamos a utilizar con uncountable nouns, con nombres no contables. Ahora, ¿cómo nos quedarían algunos ejemplos con estas frases? So we have here the examples, and we are going to separate this one. There are not any people at the party. There are not any people at the party. 
no hay personas en la fiesta. Quiere decir que se fueron todos, ¿verdad? There are not any people at the party. And in the second one, there is not any milk. There is not any milk in the fridge. No hay leche en el refrigerador. So in this case, when you have a stereo quantity of something, you are going to use these two expressions. There are not any, and there is not any. And then you are going to write the thing that you are going to tell that is like anything of that. So, después de la expresión, there are not any, ustedes van a colocar el objeto, en este caso también las personas cuentan, y como un complemento, ¿verdad? A eso. There are not any pencils in my case. Um, there are not any books in my shelf. There, um, there are not any um, glasses on the shop. Or there is not any sugar on my house. There is not any water in my bottle. There is not any... Mm, we can say eyes on the fridge, whatever thing you are going to say in that moment. So in this case, you can use this uh, these expressions to say that is a uh, zero uh, quantity of something. Now, sure. tell me. In the example one, o sea, the tipo, o sea, es, es algo in, incontable, no? O sea, porque no se sabe cuántas personas asistirían o estuvieron en la fiesta. Sí, lo podemos ver como algo uh, que no se puede contar, pero si nosotros separamos ese grupo de personas en unidades, sí las podemos contar. En this case, uh, you have 200 people. Tienen 200 personas, por ejemplo. En that case, you are going to say people, porque es un grupo de personas. Pero si nosotros los ponemos en una fila, y usted puede ir contando, son personas. Uh, no le digo objetos porque obviamente no es un objeto, son personas. Y al separarlas del grupo, yo puedo ir contando. One, two, three, fifteen, eh, sixty, and whatever. In that case, it's related to countable nouns. Las personas siempre van a ir en los nombres contables. Porque al separar ese grupo de people, me queda one person, two person, three person, four person. Y así, ¿verdad? Lo, lo podemos ir con, enumerando uno por uno. Pero en el caso de cosas como el arroz, la leche, el azúcar, ellos tienen sus... Eh, lo podemos poner de esta manera. Uh, estas, este tipo de productos tienen un conteo diferente. En el caso del azúcar, en el caso de la sal del arroz se cuenta por libras, no por eh, cada uno de los eh, granos, ¿verdad? Pero en el caso de people, sí se utiliza con countable nouns. No lo vamos a incluir en los uncountable nouns. Now, we are going to see what are the contractions. If you can see on the image that we have above, we have the de eh, contraction of these eh, phrases. Vamos a ver cuáles son las, con, eh, o sea, la manera más corta. The contractions are the shorter um, way in which you can use these phrases. Es la manera más corta en la que podemos utilizar um, estas frases. But in this case, I need you to remember that when you are using contractions in whatever tense you are using, in whatever structure, in whatever um, phrase that you are using in English, you are going to use it just for informal ways. In this case, if you are talking with someone that is like your boss, uh, you are not going to use these contractions. And if you are writing um, a very serious document, you are not going to write the contractions. When we are reading a book in English, we can find a lot of contractions, but in that case, it's depending on the category of that book. If the book is for teenagers, you are going to find a lot of these contractions. And also you are going to find different phrases that uh, 
in a very serious and formal conversation you are not going to have. Uh, if you can like look for a different kind of uh, books in this case, because you are in a process in which you are learning uh, English, you are going to like use different elements and different tools to acquire the information and the knowledge that you are going to uh, use for the future. And you can use different books. In this case, it's very important that you can read the information that you have on different kind of documents, but you can begin with books. Um, you can read children's book and you are going to find that the language is very simple. And in that case, it's because the uh, kids need to understand the meaning of the phrases and they are like very short and we have a lot of images and uh, there are like very simple phrases that are very understandable at the beginning. Then you can read uh, teenagers books and in that kind of books, you're going to find like romance. That is the main thing. And we have like teenagers talking about love. But uh, if you can uh, think that is kind of I don't like that kind of books, but you are going to make like a difference between the way in which children's book is uh, written and how the uh, teenagers books are using the expressions. They have like uh, very short uh, statements. They are using contractions. They are using like phrases that teenagers use when they are talking with their friends. Es como escuchar a los chicos hablar o mandarse mensajes, ¿verdad? Donde cortan las palabras, usan frases específicas entre ellos. Y en estos libros de adolescentes se ve mucho eso, ¿verdad? Ese tipo de lenguaje. Es como un lenguaje bastante uh, juvenil. No es difícil de entender, es bastante sencillo, porque así hablan los jóvenes. Hablan de manera bastante simple para entender los mensajes. A veces nos cuesta un poco porque no estamos como actualizados con algunas frases, eh, que incluso siendo nosotros adultos jóvenes o adultos, eh, hay frases que todavía no como, no les ponemos tanta atención y que los adolescentes utilizan y después nos quedamos como, hmm, ¿de dónde salió eso? Then you have like adult books that are talking about a crime, that they are talking about um, like scary things, they are talking about politics, they are talking about health, religion, and in those books, you are not going to find a lot of these contractions. It is not like they are not going to use it. In that case, it's because they want to be more formal. But when you are writing like a document for your boss, you are not going to use the contractions because it's not like very formal. And they will say that you are not doing your work correctly. No es eh, correcto, ¿verdad? Utilizar contracciones y cosas así en los documentos formales. Esto solo se hace en documentos informales o cuando mandamos correos a personas que conocemos con los que nos llevamos bien. Entonces, estas contractions son más que todo para mensajes entre amigos, ¿verdad? Personas que ya tienen un poco de confianza y que no es un lenguaje muy formal. Contraction. And in this case, we are going to use the different constructions for there is, there is not, the, um, there are, and there are not. And how can we apply that, that uh, information on these constructions? So in this case, it says that you can use contraction in spoken and written informal English. And we have the first one that is this one. There is, and we're going to transform this whole thing in there's, there's. Then we have there is not. That we have two different forms to transform this one. 
We have there's not or there isn't. That's very simple. Then we have there are. This one, um, in this case, we're not going to use the contractions with there are. No tenemos contracciones, o en este caso no es muy común eh, encontrar contracciones del there are. Obviamente en algunos casos podemos llegar a encontrarlas, pero no es muy común hacerlo. There are not. En este caso sí, porque vamos a hacer la contracción con el verbo to be y el negativo. There aren't. Y de esta forma, solo con el verbo to be, nada más. Now, with questions. That is the last part. Con las preguntas. Ask the different questions that we can create using auxiliaries. And using the verb to be, we are going to transform the statements, the simple statements, the affirmative statements in questions, just changing the, um, like, we're just going to change the way we write the whole thing. In this case, you're just going to move one word uh, to a different place. Solo vamos a cambiar un poco el lugar en el que están posicionadas las palabras. And that is the big difference. No hay como una, um, un problema mayor para crear preguntas con el there is y el there are. Es lo mismo que estar creando preguntas con el eh, verbo to be, is, am, um, are, o con el auxiliar, ¿verdad? Que cambiamos algunos elementos. Pero es más que todo con el verbo to be, que lo podemos utilizar como referencia. So, in this case, we have just one thing. And it says that to construct for a question, you should place is or are in front of there. Simplemente lo vamos a cambiar de lugar. El is y el are ya no va a ir detrás de el there. En este caso va a ir antes. And we are going to see some examples. We have the example number one. Is there a pen on the table? That is the question. But I'm going to show you what is the affirmative sentence of this question. En este caso, para transformarlo, solo cambiamos de lugar algunas cosas. Entonces, si lo hacemos como una oración afirmativa, dice, There is a pen on the table. ¿Qué cambia aquí? La posición nada más. Tengo aquí el verbo to be. Is. That I'm going to use green for this one. And in the second one. I have is here. That is the same uh, place. And then I have there that I'm going to use yellow. And again, we have there here. And one more thing. I have this symbol here. I'm going to use this one. And here I have a period. Miss, uh, me. when you say you should place, uh, the meaning is like colocar o poner or something. Exactamente. Like uh -huh. Ese es el significado. Ahí básicamente le está diciendo, ustedes deberán poner is or are en frente de la palabra there. Es básicamente colocar las palabras. That is the, the correct meaning. So, in this case, Ahí tenemos la diferencia, ¿verdad? Entre una pregunta y una oración afirmativa. Ahí, por eso lo pongo con colores para que ustedes vean, ¿verdad? Es lo mismo que hacer preguntas con el verbo to be. Is there a pen on the table? There is a pen on the table. It's different because in the first example on the question, we have the verb to be at the beginning. Then we have the word there. And at the end, we have the question mark. 
And in the second one, we have there at the beginning. Next, we have the verb to be. And at the end, we have a period. That is just a point. It's el punto. No le colocamos signo de interrogación porque básicamente es una afirmación. Now, we have another example. Are there any pencils in the box? Are there, I mean, I don't need this color. Thank you. Are there any pencils in the box? And in the case, if we have like this kind of examples, you know that in some cases we are going to use uh, singular countable nouns and uncountable nouns with uh, there is and with uh, there are, we have the countable plural nouns. En este caso ya sabemos eh, los usos de cada uno de ellos con los plurales y los singulares. Now, we are going to uh, talk about the countable nouns and uncountable nouns. In this case, we are going to make like a difference between the two uh, categories of words. But I need you to remember something. In English, they have different categories of words. En inglés, ellos tienen sus categorías específicas. Ellos tienen sus palabras que son contables y no contables. Ahora, Puede que en otros idiomas esos nombres contables y no contables no sean así. Puede que algunos nombres contables en otros idiomas sean no contables y algunos nombres no contables en otros idiomas sean nombres contables. Pero eso, pues, es related to the different forms of language that the countries have. In this case, we're not, like, going to discuss why in English they have this kind of words because that is something that they use and it's like the clarification of the things because in some cases you're going to say but I think that name is not countable noun or I think that name is not uncountable noun but in this case it's related to the use of the language that the people that talk in English but in this case it's Related just to U.S. Este solo es relacionado a Estados Unidos. No nos metemos con otros países de habla ingle inglesa. No estamos hablando del Reino Unido, no estamos hablando de Australia, solo de Estados Unidos. Y ellos tienen como sus listas específicas de palabras, ¿verdad? Que son contables y no contables. Y así como nosotros lo tenemos en español, como en Japón lo tienen también, como en la India. It's... Es básicamente cómo las personas relacionan eso, ¿verdad? O cómo se relacionó a la hora de crear estos uh, listados. Remember that is a long, very, very long process in which the language acquire this information that we know in this moment. Um, I know that is not like related to the topic that we are talking right now, but I remember when I was learning about English at the university, uh, we have a subject in which you uh, make like the difference between the English language and the Spanish language. Um, and in that case, we learn about the history of English and we can see the different steps or the different process that this language uh, suffer during the history. And it's long, very long. And and at the beginning, they have like very specific words. Then those words were transformed in new words. And at the end, we have the words that we know in this moment. Es un proceso bastante largo de transformación. En inglés, eh, hubo bastantes momentos en los que eh, transformaron diferentes palabras. Antes se utilizaban unas palabras para ciertas cosas. Se fueron cambiando a través de los años y ahora usamos las palabras que pues obviamente estamos aprendiendo. En español también hubieron como ciertos procesos, pero no tan largos como en el inglés. So in this case, it's just like a clarification of the, the words that we are going to see in this list. So don't worry about them because they are using these words like this. So we are going to begin with the countable nouns or 
also known as count nouns. So let me move to the next one because I don't need to mix these two. So here we have count nouns. Yes, no? yes. Count nouns in this case is related or they can be separate, as I was saying at the beginning, uh, they can be separate into individual units and counted. Esas pueden ser divididas en eh, o separadas en unidades específicas, ¿verdad? En unidades individuales y pueden ser contadas unas a unas. They usually have both a singular and a plural form. Esto es obviamente, ya lo hemos visto antes con el uso de there is, there are, que tienen nombres tanto plurales como singulares. Pero también vamos a ver una categoría donde la palabra eh, o algunos ejemplos de palabras contables ya vienen solo en su forma plural. No se puede poner en forma singular porque en muchos de los casos cambia su significado. Ellos ya vienen en forma plural. Okay, in this case, we have like the general information about these count nouns, and we are going to see some examples. And in this case, we have these ones. They are very simple to understand. So in the singular and plural forms, one phone. Este es un objeto que yo puedo contar, un teléfono. Then I have the other that is two phones. Next one, one dog, two dogs. Next one, one shirt, two shirts. Now, in this case, we're going to see a very short list of words that eh, have eh, their names in plural. Aquí hay algunas palabras que vienen en plural, como ya les explicaba, que pues obviamente no lo vamos a poner en singular porque aunque sea solo una prenda, ya su nombre está escrito de esa forma. En este caso vamos a ver algunos ejemplos de estas eh, palabras en plural. Bueno, que ya están escritas en plural. So, in this case we have clothes. We have pants. Jeans. Shorts. And... Glasses, Tell me. Glasses. Glasses. In this case I'm going to write this one here because I want to explain something about these names. Um, en este caso, voy a separarlo de esta lista. Vamos a separar la palabra glasses porque vamos a hacer la diferencia. En este caso, si ustedes se fijan, hay palabras que vienen, eh, que son diferentes. En este caso, si yo le quitara el plural a la, para, a la palabra glasses, bueno, en este caso, eh, lo podemos utilizar también para otros objetos, pero básicamente este es el ejemplo. Si yo eh, solo tengo la palabra glass, tengo dos cosas. Una, ¿cuál sería una de esas cosas? Un glass. Un vaso. Un vaso y también puedo utilizarlo mm. para... Cristal. Cristal. Material de vidrio. Exactamente, para el vidrio. Entonces... El glass, en este caso, no se refiere a los lentes, no se refiere a los anteojos, se refiere a vasos o cristales o vidrios. 
En el caso, también tenemos este otro ejemplo de shorts, que son pantalones cortos, pero que si yo le quito la S y le pongo solo short, ¿a qué me estoy refiriendo con la palabra short? Me estoy refiriendo corto. a corto o pequeño, ¿verdad? En este caso lo podemos utilizar como un adjetivo para eh, hablar de, del tamaño de algo. Entonces, si yo no le agrego la S a este, eh, esta prenda, pues yo no estoy hablando de un pantalón corto. In this case, I am using another thing. In the same case of the glasses, they are talking about a, these uh, things that we use on the face. But when uh, I am using just the word glass, I am talking about uh, some things that I use to drink some uh, juice or some water or some like this kind of thing. Entonces, en ese caso, hay palabras que ya vienen en su forma plural, pero que al cambiarlas o quererles quitar su forma plural, en algunos casos cambia su significado y en otros obviamente no va a estar correcto. Así que en este caso, aunque sea solo uno, igual que en el caso de los jeans, es un par de jeans, así como lo podemos escribir en inglés, a pair of jeans, un par de jeans eh, se refiere a una sola prenda, pero tiene su nombre en plural. Ahora, los nankan nouns. In this case, these exist, I mean, these nouns exist as masses or abstract quantities that cannot be counted. En este caso hablamos de masas, de cosas grandes, que eh, son también abstractas en algunos casos y que no pueden ser contadas. Así como los objetos que tenemos en las countable nouns, they cannot be counted in the same way as I was saying uh, at the beginning. In that case, they have different uh, measurements in which you are going to count the eh, the quantity of the things tienen diferentes formas de medición no las voy a contar una por una bueno, en el caso del arroz y lo vamos a ver de esta forma sí lo podríamos contar uno a uno los granos pero es like a very tiring job and there is a lot of things but imagine that you want to have one pound una libra queremos una libra de arroz And you are going to begin, count one, two, three, and you are going to have like three hours, four hours counting the eh, every piece of the, the pound that you need to, to complete. Es bastante complicado, ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso es que ellos tienen este conteo por masa. Básicamente, agarramos una cantidad grande, lo ponemos en una báscula, ¿verdad? Una balanza y hacemos el conteo. So in that case, it's like they exist as masses. Okay, in this case, we have different categories. Aquí sí vamos a ver categorías. In the case of the countable nouns, it is not like we are going to have categories because almost all the things, almost all the objects are countable nouns. In this case, in the uncountable nouns, we are going to divide the information into categories to understand better the use of the non-countable nouns and which words we can have in each of these categories. So we are going to have this list of category of things in which we are going to find some words related to non-countable nouns. In the first one, a mass, una masa, algo que no puede ser contado eh, básicamente eh, tampoco en libras, en onzas, no es like that. En este caso es un grupo de, podemos llamarlo energía, 
eh, esfuerzo. Some different things. In this case, we can use the word work. Work, homework, and money. Um, I have like a very um, understandable uh, example for this one. En este caso, cuando hablamos de masas, yo estoy hablando de dinero, pero ustedes me pueden decir, ah, pero yo puedo contar las monedas, o yo puedo contar cuántos billetes tengo en mi, en mi cartera o en mi billetera. Yes, you can count that amount of paper and that amount of coins. But when we are talking about uh, an amount of money, you are not going to use a countable noun. En ese caso, no podemos utilizar nombres contables. Cuando utilizamos cantidades de dinero. Yo puedo decir, tengo 100 dólares. Pero, ¿dónde los tengo? ¿En the bank? ¿O en physical? Lo puedo tener en físico, pero ¿qué voy a contar yo en ese caso? ¿Cuántos billetes tengo para llegar a esa cantidad? ¿Cuántas monedas tengo para llegar a esa cantidad? Yo puedo contar el material, las monedas y los billetes, que son materiales diferentes. Pero la cantidad de dinero, o sea, ¿cuánto se logra recoger entre esas monedas y esos billetes? Pues ya es un uncountable noun. No se refiere al material, ¿verdad? Yo puedo contar todas las monedas que tengo. Yo puedo contar todos los billetes. But in that case, we are talking about paper and another kind of um, material. But in this case, the amount of money is uncountable now. Porque es una manera diferente de contar las cosas. Es una cifra. Then, in the second category, we have a natural substance. A natural substance. In this case, we have air, ice, water, and fire. Tenemos sustancias naturales. Y tenemos el aire, el hielo, el agua y el fuego. Then we have in food, en comidas, we have rice, milk, coffee, and sugar. Then we have an abstract concept, un concepto abstracto. And in this case, we have an advice, a happiness, or the happiness, I mean. Okay, give me a second. Uh -huh. Ah, give me a moment, give me a moment, don't worry. Happiness, health, and education. Ok, aquí tenemos cosas básicamente que son conceptos abstractos porque básicamente son cosas que nosotros decimos, uh, realizamos, pero obviamente, ¿verdad? No hay algo físico que podamos tener. En this case, in an advice, un consejo, no podemos contar los consejos porque... Son palabras, ¿verdad? Son cosas que eh, se van diciendo y en este caso, pues, incluso eh, no podemos hacer un conteo de la magnitud del consejo. La felicidad no la podemos contar tampoco, a menos que tengamos un medidor, ¿verdad? Que vaya eh, haciendo como un conteo de gotitas de felicidad y nos diga, ah, oh, you are 100% happy or you need to, to be more happy because you are very low. That case is not like this. The health is another a big thing because uh, you are healthy, you are unhealthy, you don't know anything about your health. In that case, it's not like we are going to count uh, that kind of things. And education too, because we have a lot of things related to education. We have different subjects, we have different concepts, different ideas, different information. So in that case, it's a big, big thing. Then also we have a game. And in this one, we have soccer, tennis, 
hockey and chess. And I am not talking about the elements that we use to play that kind of games. Because in that case, you can tell me, ah, but in chess, we can count the pieces. Sí, podemos contar las piezas, pero no nos referimos a los elementos físicos del deporte, sino al deporte en sí. ¿Qué es lo que hacemos con ese deporte? ¿Cómo lo jugamos? Y, y todo eso, no los elementos que utilizamos para desarrollarlo. Then we have a disease, una enfermedad. Obviamente estas no se pueden contar. And in this one, it's like this one, polio, influenza, and malaria. These are just examples. We have a lot of different diseases through the world. Then we have subjects. And we have here economics. Like see. Then we have astronomy, biology, and history. Then we have language, even the languages, we cannot count anything about the languages. And we have here Arabic, Chinese, Spanish, English. And the last one, an activity. This is the última categoría, an activity. And we are um at the end with this last activity i mean this last category if we are going to end the session too and in this case you are going to use these activities with the ing form in este caso cuando utilizamos estas actividades o los nombres de estas actividades lo vamos a utilizar con el ing verdad que es cuando transformamos la palabra o el verbo Y le ponemos ING para transformarlo. En este caso tenemos la primera que es swim, que es nadar. But we are going to add a swimming, que es natación, ¿verdad? Como natación. I mean, then we have dancing, reading, smoking, and drinking. En este caso, así es como vamos a utilizar estas actividades cuando estemos hablando de nombres contables y no contables. Another thing that I want to say. Tell me. Puedes subirlo, por favor. Remember, you have this document on the group of WhatsApp. Ustedes tienen este documento en el grupo. Another thing that I just want to say, because I have a uh, image here, I think it's going to be very far because I'm, I was just writing, but I don't need, I mean, I don't want to move this one because I know that you are looking for the information that you have here. And in this case, you're going to find a image of examples of countable and uncountable nouns, but related to food. Ahí en el documento ustedes van a encontrar una imagen en la cual van a tener ejemplos de comida, de palabras que tienen que ver con comidas, que son nombres contables y no contables. But in that case, you can look. This is the image in which you are going to see something like this. You're going to find a burger, fries, cereal, jam, and all of that things. Solo como ejemplos. In this case, we are going to end the session here and we are going to um, see each other on the session that we have tomorrow. And I'm just going to um, ask you if you have some troubles with the, the meter. Uh, el día de mañana vamos a tratar de, 
resolver algunas dudas con el examen. Si ustedes no lograron completarlo, lo vamos a completar en la sesión. O si tienen alguna duda, algún ejercicio que no les salió bien, lo vamos a hacer en la sesión de mañana. So we are going to end the session here and we are, we are going to see each other tomorrow on the session number three of this week, number two. So good night and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you. Bye. Thank bye you. Bye. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.